Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Rich Reflex. This week we have with us our in-house guest expert, our work bestie, Crystal. Hi. Welcome back, Crystal. Crystal is a thought leader in the leadership and holistic education. She has taught and trained more than 40,000 people, including CEOs, mm. board of directors, students and academics. We're so honoured to have you back with us, Crystal. And this week, we're going to be learning from you how we can professionally phrase ourselves for especially leaders and managers, right? I think especially in the last episode, we learned from you how to skillfully express ourselves to get our message across. So, like, I normally do this sort of leadership communication training maybe over two or three days. But for you, Rachel, we're going to do yeah. it in, what, 15 minutes? <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And it's really great because I think after that episode at a lot of managers and leaders were writing writing in. They were like, mm-hmm. Oh, how about me? I have yeah. so many different ways that mm-hmm. I wanna be able to communicate and give feedback mm-hmm. too. Absolutely. So without further ado, we're gonna dive into some of um what the managers and leaders have submitted for us to go through together. Sure, hit me. Okay. <laughs> so the first one is Your performance has been below expectations. What's going on? Okay, so for this one, I think it's important to determine first, is this a single project where their performance was below expectations or was there like a repeated pattern? Mm, So is it one-off versus... Okay. Yes. So typically, if it's a one-off, I would advise that you come at it a little gentler, frame it like it may have been a communications issue. So for instance, I might say something like, um, hey, I want to talk about that recent project that we did. Perhaps I wasn't clear Mm. in communicating to you my expectations of what was involved in this project. And then I would show that person like what I expect. I may even bring out certain like samples of work that, that I think demonstrate the standard that I want. And I think samples are important because a lot of times you can say like oh the writing needs to be clearer mm. or like you know the graphics needs to Which be is a more bit subjective yes mm. like oh the graphics could be more compelling but then like people are like what does that actually mean so I find that you know when you're specifically talking about one aspect in which their performance falls short it really helps to be very clear about showing them with concrete examples like where you want them to be now however if the issue is that there is a repeated pattern in which their performance is below expectations, you may need to have more of a a deeper conversation and say, look, um, over the past um, five weeks that you've been with us, I've noticed a pattern. So this is where you talk about the specific pattern. So I've noticed that you've been late three times or, you know, you've missed four deadlines and be as specific as possible. And then in that situation, you want to talk about like the impact Mm. that behavior has on them Mm. and on the team. So for example, like if their work doesn't meet standards, what is the impact to them? So you could say, for instance, that, you know, I worry that if this goes on, that this may impact your career progression or you can talk about the impact to the team. When these uh, when pieces of work are submitted late, there's a knock-on impact on the team. Mm. And it's really important that you're aware that this is a very key part of your job scope. And uh, that's when the next phase and the last phase is telling them about, like, in future, what improvements do you want to see from them? And again, in very clear terms. Mm. So in future, I'd like to see you meet your deadlines on time. And also, I would uh, like to see you be punctual or, you know, even five minutes early for meetings, for Mm. example. Well, so it's really like coming to them with facts Mm -hmm. and also then evidence of, you know, in which areas they have fallen short. And then also, I think what I really love is like the impact that the underperformance has on the people around, like the team and the organization. Yes, I always think that you have to keep on asking yourself, are you making it clear for the other person so that in their mind, they cannot think so what? Mm. A lot of times when leaders give people feedback, the other person that you're giving feedback to is thinking, so what? No big deal, only what? What's the consequence? Yeah, it's only like I was only late for a couple of times. Nobody was impacted. And in their mind while you're talking, they might even think you're nagging. 
So the whole point is that when you give feedback to someone, the most important part of the feedback is actually crystallizing the impact for them, quantifying the so what. So because I'm giving you this feedback because I want you to know that when you did this, mm. this has certain consequences for you, yep. for me, for the team. And that's your job as a manager to make it very clear to them what the impact is. This is really amazing. I'm taking notes internally too. <laughs> Moving on to the next situation. Mm -hmm. You need to work faster and more efficiently. Yeah, so generally with these types of instances, I like to ask that person to do a self-assessment first. Okay. You don't want to come in straight and say you are not efficient and you are not fast enough um, because that kind of takes away all the power from them and also like it's not really giving them the opportunity to tell their side of the story. Um, so like I like to ask them, so in terms of efficiency on a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is like maximum efficient and 1 is like not efficient at all, where do you, where would you rate your Yourself. And if they say like three, okay, then you know, okay, at mm, least they are self aware. self aware. Yeah. So then you don't need to like, you know, uh, be so hard on them. And you might ask them, okay, so tell me why it's a three. What could we do? What kind of support would you need to get it to a five or a seven? And then you can actually talk because Singaporeans, particularly, very concrete thinkers, Rachel. Yeah. So, like, you know, numbers are good for them because, you know, <laughs> if you just ask them, like, are you efficient? Yeah, la, okay, la, normal. Mm, I see. But okay and normal doesn't mean anything. Whereas if they say like, oh, I think I'm at a three and you say, well, what would a five look like? What kind of support would you need to get to a seven, for instance? Then it makes it clearer. Now, if they say, oh, I think I'm at an eight and you okay. evaluate them at a two, then we've got an issue. Yeah. Because then it's a mm -hmm. self-awareness and perception gap. And that's where I might need to come in and say, oh, that's interesting. Tell me why did you rate yourself at eight? Mm. Listen to them and see what they say. Sometimes they may have points that you weren't aware of. Maybe there was really a lot of hidden work or invisible work that you were not aware of. So this is also like building up that trust and empathy because you don't want just to kind of jump on their yeah. throat sort of thing. Yeah. Then, but let's say they give you all these reasons and you don't feel it's quite aligned, then that's where you might need to come in with the reality check and mm. say, well, from where I'm sitting, my perspective, it's actually more like a three. Mm. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, generally it should take a person in this department about three days to write a report, but it seems to be taking you five days or, you know, even uh, two weeks to come up with this specific report. Am I missing anything? And that's an important question. You don't want to be in a situation where the per where the, the person says, oh, actually, I didn't share with you before, but my wife has cancer. Yeah. Oh, there's been a death in the family. Yeah. And if you just come straight and like, you are not efficient, no, 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 whatever, like you really risk alienating people who have their own stories. Mm, so give them that benefit of doubt to be able to Number one, you know, check in with themselves to see mm -hmm. if they're self-aware enough yep. to know where they're at. Yes. And then also, secondly, I, what I really love is to hear from them. Mm -hmm. You know, why are they struggling? How can we get there together? Yeah. Mm. Am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Yeah. So that's a really powerful one. Mm. And then that's where, you know, I wouldn't actually give them all the answers. Like in future, you must A, then B, then C. I would actually get them to ideate. Say like, look the goal is for you to be more uh, efficient. This is, by the way, something called the GROW coaching model in which in any problem-focused conversation, there's four phases. You want to talk about G, which is the goal, uh, R, which is the reality, O is the options, and W is the way forward. So it spells grow, right? Mm -hmm. So the first one is like to, to coach them a little bit, like what's the goal? So the goal is for you to be more effective and more efficient. And that looks like dot, dot, dot. This is what it would look like. Then the next phase is like the reality is it hasn't been this mm -hmm. way. Right now you are here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here's the reality and here's the gap, okay? Then the third part is the O, which is the options. Like, so this is where you ask them, what, what options do you think? you could come up with that will help us bridge this gap between the goal and the reality. Of course, the last part of that 
coaching conversation would be the W, which is the way forward. Okay, so now we've uh, discussed option A, B, C, D. Mm. Which of these do you think we should get started with? Like, what are the next action steps that we could do so there is a way forward? And then we can kind of say, like, okay, let's uh, come back in one week or two weeks' time and let's review, like what the next steps were and like how successful you were with that. So valuable. You know, in the next um, subtopic of the questions that I have been getting, there's a lot of managers and leaders who ask about personal hygiene and personal grooming. Oh my God, yes. A lot of them, you know, they struggle. I think especially in the Asian culture, maybe yes. we find it very sensitive to bring uh, things like that up. So questions come in like, you know, mm-hmm. I've noticed for a while now that you have stale breath, body mm-hmm. odour. Could you do something about it? Mm-hmm. How can we professionally say things like that? Yeah, I was just sharing um, that yeah. I have had this many, many times before. Where people, Many, many times? Yes, many times before where I've been asked to step in as uh, and give difficult feedback to someone. And, uh, you know, in one case, it was really very awkward because it was a mother who was breastfeeding. Oh. And of course, like as a mother myself, you have like yeah. all kinds of, uh, you know, sometimes you may not be aware that it's coming across that way. But you will also want to know, this is a very awkward conversation, but it's also the kind of thing that nobody would tell you unless they care for you. Mm. So it's like, how do I give them the, you know, awkward but important gift of understanding how they're showing up to others? So I might say something like, you know, obviously find a private time and space to do this, but I might take them aside and say, look, I want to share with you about an awkward but important topic. And before I get into this, I want to assure you that I've had many of these sort of experiences myself where I've been in a situation where I wasn't aware of something that I was doing, but others were aware. And I wish yeah. I had someone who had told me. I what could have done something about it I could it have done earlier. something about it. So I want to share with you that, you know, lately... You may not realize, but there has been a noticeable odor mm. Yeah, when you come to work. And I don't know if it's a medical condition or it may be a uh, awareness issue, but it's definitely noticeable. And uh, I hope, I don't mean to offend you. I don't mean to embarrass you. I'm sharing this because I want you to be aware so that this doesn't get in the way of distracting anyone from the great work that you're doing and I think that you're such a a capable or this is where you insert what you appreciate about that person and you know as in my role as your boss or as your manager it's I'm looking out for you and I hope that you take it in the spirit of me wanting the best for you and I think that's about it sometimes I you know if I feel that it was really awkward I might say I hope that you forgive me for bringing this up. Mm. I know it wasn't, it's not easy to hear. And I'm just glad that we have this relationship of trust where we are able to share openly about topics that are even like difficult like this. I think what you're doing as a leader is you're modeling for them that you don't shy away from a difficult conversation. Mm. And that's really important for them to know. Mm. Like, I feel like people trust you when you're able to like say what needs to be said with their interests at heart and not just do the, you know, what we call artificial harmony. Yeah. So artificial harmony is like, oh, you know, I will just talk about easy things, but like brush Sip all the, the bad rest things. under the carpet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You need to be more proactive in searching for and taking up causes to improve your skills. Okay. So in these sort of situations, I feel it's important to clearly define the core values uh, that you expect of everyone on the team. So, for example, what you're talking about is a value of lifelong learning or continuous growth, growth mindset, something like that. I feel like when you codify what the core values are, uh, it's very easy for you to give feedback because people know there's like a a list, Mm. like a rubric of what you're being assessed for. So essentially values are ordinary everyday behaviors that are either rewarded or penalized in our company. If you make it very clear that one of the core values on our team is uh, 
growth mindset, then every time you give feedback when somebody didn't exhibit that, it's a lot easier because you're reminding them, you remember when we hired you or when we, remember we joined a team, one of the, our four core values is growth mindset. And what this looks like mm. is in a meeting, being able to be open-minded to new solutions. This means that, for example, uh, continuous commitment to learning and improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's important to not make it personal and say, look, for every professional on our team, we expect them to align with our core values. Having clear values is so important because like, they help guide people to what kind of behaviour gets them promoted yeah. and what kind of behaviour is you know frowned upon or not encouraged mm. in, at work. Mm. And the next one is, you need to learn to take ownership of your mistakes. Yeah, so this again comes back to the values issue where it's like one of the core expectations slash values of people on our team is that everyone needs to behave like a mature professional. And that means being able to be responsible and take ownership and a accountability. Mm. Yeah, so if you have a core value that's accountability, that's very clear. If not, you can park it under expectations of any professional. And um, so you can say to them that, look, how this looks like at work is that when there is a mistake, and be specific, like this week, uh, you had made a mistake with this client order. And uh, what you did from what I could observe is that you replied and dot 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 and what would have demonstrated ownership would be if you had mm. actually apologized to the customer and you had immediately rectified this error dot 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 and give very concrete examples yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's really was something that's very helpful also so mm. that it's not ambiguous because usually when it's ambiguous they might think that oh it's a personal attack or something like that. Yeah, and I really like scaling, like, yeah. you know, that one to 10 sort of thing. Mm. So, like, here's what a five out of 10 in ownership looks like. Mm. I'll send an email and then, you know, and apologize to the customer. Here's what a seven looks like. Singaporeans need examples. There is something <laughs> about our mentality that maybe from young we see model answer. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you know, they, they really light up. It's like, oh, this is what you want when yeah. you show them a model answer. It's true. Answer. It's our conditioning. Uh. Yeah. yeah. And I wish that everyone could problem solve and be like a great person Pro, uh, proactive, you know, sort of abstract thinker. But the thing is that, especially for more junior people, they need more uh, guidance. guidance. I have given you enough time and chances to mm -hmm. improve. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time for you to look for another opportunity in another organization. Mm. So you never want these kind of conversations to come as a surprise to the mm. other person. That's my number one principle. So all along, there should be um, constant feedback. Um, given to them that whatever they're doing is not to expectations. So typically after every feedback conversation, I highly encourage leaders to actually send up a follow-up email just to remind people of like what's been said because sometimes in the conversation, they might forget what has been said. But another uh, purpose of that email is so that you have a kind of record mm. of like how many times you've had this discussion. So like it's very clear like, you know, if I can find like 20 emails yeah. with this person where I'm repeatedly having discussions mm -hmm. about this piece of feedback, then it's very clear that this shouldn't be a surprise. And you might want to say something along the lines of, look, for over the past three months, we've had eight conversations about this particular subject. But in this situation, there's been a lot of guidance given to you and we haven't been seeing the kind of progress that we require for someone in this role. This is not looking as if the fit mm. is working out for us. So this is where you give them some real hard deadlines. It's like, we are going to need to see some rapid and significant improvements within the next four weeks. Otherwise, this is going to significantly impact your chances of remaining with the firm or something like that. Yeah, and maybe one of the core values of the organization is teamwork and collaboration. Yes. And this person has had 
maybe repeated feedback over the last few months that, you know, um, they haven't been displaying this core value and attribute, especially when working with different yes. teams. Yes. So how would you handle someone who is not performing in the, in the area yeah. of meeting the core values? I also think that's a performance issue. So mm. I would make it clear to this person that, look, at our firm, 50% of performance is the what you manage to do like the goals you okay you achieve this target you hit this goal but the other 50% is the how you did it so we don't want people on our team for example who manage to achieve results but at the cost yeah. of integrity or at the cost of you know burning other people out or whatever it is that's as important as the what you do so this is a performance issue and i would say that look you know core values are essentially operating behaviors and commitments that all of us you know agree to and it is not fair on the entire team and detrimental to the whole culture when uh, there are, you know, certain uh, people on the team who are not playing by our commitments. Mm. Yeah. That's really enlightening. The next one is, you talk too much and inappropriately, mm-hmm. especially with our clients. So I think maybe this leader is referring to, you know, maybe at client meetings, uh-huh. the team member comes in inappropriately to um, talk about something else that's maybe not related to right. the issue or the agenda yeah. and yes. maybe isn't aware that he or she has to stop or it's uh-huh. causing discomfort right. amongst the rest of the attendees. Yes. Hey, Rach. Um, I want to talk to you about that last client luncheon that we had. So uh, firstly, I want you to know that I always value your input. And I think it's great that you're comfortable speaking up. Having said that, I think it's important to balance that with boundaries and discretion. So for example, in the last client luncheon, I observed that you took quite a lot of the airtime in the meeting telling uh, personal anecdotes. And that's fine for a social situation. But in this case, Mm. the impact of that in this meeting is that we weren't able to hear from the client as much as we wanted. And the point of a client luncheon is really for us to listen to the client. So this is where you're giving them, so what? Yes. It's like the impact of yes. it. Because if I'm a junior person, I might just think, yo, why are you nagging me? The client enjoyed it. Everyone laughed. Yeah. So this is where you really need to make it really clear for them. It's like they may have enjoyed it. They may have laughed. But never forget that the purpose of what we're doing is, our objectives is A, to get information from the client, mm. to listen for, to them. B, to be able to be strategic about how we uh, you know, position our product offerings to the client and so forth. So, it's, so that they don't feel that it's personal. Let's get back to first principles. What is a client meeting about? What is the purpose of this lunch? What does success mean to us? What is your role in yeah, this situation? Exactly. So that it doesn't seem so personal. It's more like, hey, you know, let's do a teach-in mm. on how I can set you up for success. Mm. And then this feedback is just part of that teach-in, when like how you can be better at what you do. And I think, Crystal, what is so valuable about this exchange here is I think, you know, you're really imparting to us the important skills when it comes to communication. If you're not a leader or even if you're a leader, but especially so if you're a leader. Yeah. If we could walk away from this session, what are some first principles or key principles that we should always keep at the back of our minds whenever we find ourselves stumbling to communicate effectively? The first thing that any human being needs is empathy. They need to feel you see them, you hear them, and that they matter. So whenever there's a difficult situation, I always try to put myself in their shoes and think like, you know, if that were me, how, you know, how would I see the world and how would I want to be communicated to? But the second principle is empathy must be balanced with boundaries. Wow. It is not just like, Endless. I see endless empathy. I see your point of view. It's like sometimes empathy and boundary sounds like this. It's like, Rage, I respect that is your truth. But at the same time, we're going to need you to respect this dress code or to play by these commitments, you know? So boundaries is 
also equally important. So the sequence is always first apply empathy, hear them out, say, is there anything I'm missing? Is there anything I need to know that was behind, you know, this behavior? And then once you've listened to them and they feel seen and heard, that's where you go into the boundaries and the expectations and like coaching them through the conversation. I think the third principle is also always try to check for self-awareness. Mm-hmm. So I like to ask them to tell their version of the story and to self-assess. What do you think? How could this be better? I'd like to involve them as an ally in the collective problem solving so that it's not me versus you. It is actually both of us collectively problem solving. So it's kind of like like letting them know that you're on their side, you're aligned on these same goals that we have. And also at the same time, what I love is giving them the ownership also to be able to make the changes from there on. Yeah, I think the last principle is belief. They need to feel like you believe in them. And there was this great research study that was done in which students were put in group A and group B and they did an essay and teachers gave them exactly the same feedback, group A and group B, written feedback on their essay. But the difference was that in one of the groups, the teachers wrote one extra sentence. It was called the magic sentence. And they said, I am giving you this feedback because I have high standards and I know or I believe that you can meet them. And then afterwards, they asked both Group A and Group B, would you like to take the effort to resubmit uh, an approved survey? And almost no one from Group B who didn't have the magic sentence wanted to try again. And like nearly half the people from Group A, which is an astounding amount of people who received the magic sentence, wanted to try again. And that just shows the power of belief. The best leaders are the ones where you really feel they believed at you, even when you didn't believe in yourself. Yeah. It made you want to try harder, mm. to really rise in the occasion, and to prove to them what you see in me, mm. I can do it. Wow, and that really is the beauty and the role also, a key role of a leader. Sometimes it's also being able to see someone for more than who they are, even if at the moment they themselves can't see it within themselves. Absolutely. Wow, thank you so much, Crystal, for sharing and imparting your wisdom with um, to all of us. If you have any other questions for Crystal or us, please feel free to write in to us on our social media pages. Crystal, where can we find you on Instagram, TikTok? Yep. All Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. I'm all super active on all three <laughs> platforms. And it's the same. My username is Crystal Lim Langa, one word. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining us. Please let us know what are your key takeaways from this episode and what else you want to learn from Crystal. And we hope yeah. to see you again next month for another week of Rich Reflex with our work bestie, Crystal. See you. Bye. Bye.